Hello guys, welcome to Geology Concepts. This is the third video of the primary structures part in the structural geology series. So let's get into it. So we'll see in this video the primary structures in igneous rocks. Okay. So in igneous rocks, first of all, we need to understand that there are two types of igneous rocks. One is extrusive igneous rocks and the other extrusive igneous rocks and others are intrusive igneous rocks. The difference is that the extrusive igneous rocks are formed from lava on the surface of the earth and cooled under air and water conditions. This also includes the ash from volcanic winds, explosive extrusions, okay. Then there is this igne intrusive rocks which are cooled below the surface in the mantle region. They are cooled below the surface of the earth, okay. And uh, more difference that uh, if we if we go little deeper into it the intrusive rocks have grainy texture whereas extrusive rocks are very fine grained and mostly if they are cooled very rapidly they have a glassy texture okay so now let's get into it the get into, get into the primary structures the first here is the pillow lava what is a pillow lava it's a basaltic lava under water okay so if the if lava comes out under water it solidifies quickly so the surface cools there is a glassy skin okay and then it forms like a pillow like structures okay this bulbous structures and this also helps us to understand the top direction okay so this type of structures you can see here this type of structure are actually spherical in shape and uh, after erosion it looks circular like this so these are underwater lava which are cooled rapidly and therefore forms the pillow like structure okay moving on we have the vesicles now vesicles are they are filled with secondary minerals let's say there was this rock and when this cooled or under pressure there was some volatile material that comes oozing out of these rocks and creating these small gaps now these gaps or these uh, uh, space within the rock is called vesicles now sometimes these vesicles get filled with secondary minerals or sedimentary or sediments yeah secondary or sedimentary materials in this in these gaps and then these gaps are called amygdules or amygdaloidals amygdaloidals okay so vesicles are the empty cavities whereas if it is filled with secondary mineral then it is amygdaloidal okay next we have columnar joints columnar joints are so these are three to six sided column as you can see in this figure these are three to six sided columns and with long perpendicular along axis perpendicular to isotherms and the flow boundaries this is when this is when the and this igneous rock comes out from a restricted zone and cools and contracts to form these kind of columns okay then in the next we have pahohoe pahoho these names come from the <laughs> actually it is from the hawaii region okay all these lava flow may mostly names are from the Hawaiian island of uh, where there is uh, it's a red hot spot so there is a continuous flow of lava in that region so Pahohe is the ropey or uh, or folded lava so this type of lava is uh, very less viscous and try to flow very easily and therefore forming this rope kind of structure on the outer surface called that's why they are called as ropey lava as you can see in this figure also counter to it is the blocky lava which is very viscous and as soon as it comes out to the surface the surface part is to cool okay and since it is highly viscous it doesn't move and forms blocks so this is blocks this is called blocky lava and the hot part inside which is which is still in molten state 
it rips apart these blocks that are formed and gives the structure as you can see in this figure this type of uh, uh, structure is called AA lava okay then we have the pyro the pyroclastic structures now pyroclastic structures involve the volcanic breccia it, it it includes everything that comes out of a volcano and uh, that can be of very angular and uh, large in size called volcanic breccia it can be agglomerate agglomerate means they are rounded but uh, greater than 4 millimeter but they are rounded breccia is angular then tuff tuff is less than 4 millimeter in size and ash flow is having a prime have a primary foliation or uh, we also call it that igni bright okay it is it's very fine it's very fine size okay then we moving on we have uh, we have sills now these are concordant like concordant intrusive rocks so when we say concordant we mean it is parallel to the pre-existing structure suppose there is a there is a uh, country rock and there is this uh, hot magma or uh, hot uh, molten magma coming out from a opening and uh, solidifying if it is if it solidifies along the or parallel to the pre-existing structure or pre-existing geometry like you see in this figure here this sill this dark color sill this layer in between is almost concordant with the geometry of the overall structure around it so this is called as a, uh, a, a concordant intrusive body so if you zoom in and you see this figure here you can see this sill is along the structure okay so this is called as uh, concordant and if it is a long sheet like structure we call it as this you can see here also sheet like structure we call it as sill okay next on concordant concordant list we have the lacolith what is lacolith lacoliths are concordant intrusive which are which have a flat base but a convex top okay so let's say this uh, magma came out from uh, from the from the inside the inside the earth and uh, deposited in the form of a mountain here and, and and not form of mountain but it forms a concave convex up shape with a flat base this type of structure is called lacolith okay and opposite to it we have a lopolith which are actually which have a flat top but have a concave base have a concave base like this so these are called as lopoliths if you can if you zoom if you zoom in this figure you can see this seventh one here right the seventh here is the lopolith here okay and one here is look this is lopolith all right so this is clear next we have facoliths facoliths are that if this lava is trapped in a fold here and see if you can see in this figure this part this part here yeah along with the fold if it is if it is along with the fold okay let's say in the crest position of the fold or in the trough position of the fold if it is along the fold then we call it as facoliths okay next we have dikes now we came to discordant part now discordant means it cut across the pre-existing structure okay so if we zoom into this figure you see here yeah in this figure you see this line this cutting through the sea the country rocks are in the horizontal direction but this magma is cutting through this rock here also in this place also it is cutting through the rock then it is called as dike okay so dikes definition of dikes will say that it is a sheet intrusion that cross cut the stratification okay you see this figure here yeah it's a sheet intrusion it's a sheet like intrusion that cross cut the stratified sequence vertically in an uh, vertically through the country rocks so we this type of structure between the uh, country rocks or stratified sequence is called as dikes they are discordant okay then in again in the discordant we have dike swarms so it is another uh, variant of dikes uh, which is no it means that the dikes that uh, 
have a swarm like structure they have there are many dikes at one place we call it as a dark dike swarms okay we also have radial dikes radial dikes means they are vertically dipping and you can see this figure they are vertic uh, vertically dipping down but are circular in shape and and moving out from a central point you see figure here it's moving away from a central point and dipping vertically so this is called as a radial dike vertically dipping and run outward from the center of the volcano like a spokes of a wheel so like a spokes of the wheel you see they are running outside from a center so this is called as the radial or radiating dikes okay next we have large scale discordant which means like a batholith and stock now stock is just a few kilometers you see his this figure here yeah this this part here this small part this is a stock now it's a few kilometer scale in diameter blob like intrusions that come from down it is also discordant and we have batholiths batholiths are it's a huge bob like intrusion you can see it's a very huge bob like intrusion it can be seen in this figure it can be very large usually a composite of many plutons okay as you can see in the earlier figure also this you see it down and below this part this this is better like this is very huge in size and sometimes due to erosion it shows up to the surface and looks something like this as you see in this figure here okay so batholiths are larger than stock stock itself is of a few kilometer scale but batholith is like daddy of stock okay or more than 40 meter kilometer square area then we have the impact creators creators now what is that it is uh, it is when that object hits the earth so it forms like a crater okay so the energy when it hit the earth is very high because velocity is of the scale of 10 to 20 kilometers per second when it is hitting the earth so energy in terms of kinetic energy is huge so this can be due to the jet of a debris at impact then propagation of the shock waves in microseconds as soon as it attacks there is a propagation of, of shock waves all around and it stretches so much higher that than the strength of the rock then it leads to brasiation like angular particles melting and even vaporization okay and uh, mostly they have a circular craters and a strata along the rim may be folded back so basic geometry if we see of a crater is something okay is something like this you see it's it's a cone shaped uh, structure mostly and it's a high they because there are very high pressure changes you can see variants of quartz like coesite and stishovite which are which are very high pressure changes okay and extreme high temperature about 1500 to 1700 degrees celsius okay uh, then we have this uh, this structure you see here this one this is called as shatter cone okay apex point to the direction from where the object came so apex of this points into the direction from where the object came then there are impact breccias along it you see this this portion along it there are impact breccias and then there is a strong structural different in disturbance around the rim here along the rim there is strong structural disturbance of undeformed rock below and uh, so it for this lecture and uh, next time we will get into in next lecture we will start with folds and uh, types of folds and types of faults and move on to mechanism of folding and faulting and more circle and stress and strain parameters okay till then keep revising and thank you subscribe to know your planet better